um, like Instagram entrepreneurs and people who line up bakeries, let's get this fucking bread. Like bush duffers and farmers, let's yeet this wheat. <laughs> that's a good one. That Thank is. you. Are we recording? Uh, that's red. That's red. That's red. I think we just did our uh, cold open. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to uh, the first in a series called The Painting Chronicles, where I, Tyler, a uh, amateur painter, if I'm being nice to myself, <laughs> um, will bring on a guest uh, who has more knowledge than I. I won't say expert because every single person that I've talked to about this doesn't want to be called an expert. Yeah, and, and for good reason. Yeah. Um, because if we get something wrong. Uh, <laughs> No, no, I, I would actually wager it's it's for a completely separate reason. Yeah. Beginner's mindset, but we'll yeah. get into that. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, yeah, but so this is a series where I'll be talking to more experienced painters to try and uh, boost my own painting and also help you out at home. You know, we're, we're all about the, the people. It's the always community. about charity, right? It's all, <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm definitely not using this show to motivate myself to paint. Like, And that's the only reason I was like, oh, yeah, I should do this show. Man, motivation helps. Anywhere you can get motivation, take it. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, what I will be doing is asking Gorchin here a few questions. Um, he'll be helping us out with some painting. and Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure which camera to wave at, so I was like, <laughs> I'll wave at every camera. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> you can ask me some questions. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's right. I'm going <laughs> to split the screen three ways and just watch <laughs> all the cameras. <laughs> So we will be, yeah, we'll be having asking a few questions. Uh, Gorchen will give us a few tips, and then I will be trying to implement those on my current painting project, which at the moment is my panther. But diving right in, hopefully this helps everyone at home. Uh, we'll start with a little bit about you, Gorchen. What's what's your history with uh, with painting? With, with painting specifically? Yeah, like uh, miniature painting. Well, right. I mean, what's sure. your history? Uh, well, we've, we've got all that here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. After the, the rigmarole that was that set up, <laughs> I don't think we've got all day. Uh, oh. Production quality improvements have their pains. Yes. Uh, their growing pains. Growing pains. Uh, so painting history. So I was never really like a creative kid. Um you know, oh shit, we're going that far back. <laughs> well, I just figured I'd lay the baseline because I know, no, 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 no. I know some of the guys that, that I chat to, they're all just like, ah, oh, you know, some of them have STEM careers, for example. Yeah. So, and they're just like, ah, oh, you know, I was always the kid drawing in class. I was never the yeah. one taking notes. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. That wasn't me. No, uh, no, no. I couldn't. I could not draw to save my life. Um, or anybody else's life, for that matter. Just could not do it. <laughs> could not do it. <laughs> Don't rely on God. That's what are you saying? <laughs> I, I was always, I was always the kid like writing stories. Mm. So it's not, it's not to say that I wasn't creative. That's probably a bit of a yeah. misnomer. But I was painting wasn't your creative outlet. Yeah, it, it, visual, visual, creative, creativity yep. was was never my outlet. Um, my creative outlet was always writing. So mm. I wrote a lot of stories and stuff growing up. Cool. Uh, that was my thing. Um, All right. And and I guess uh, in some ways you have to be able to paint a picture in different ways. Mm. But that also meant that like, I didn't kind of, a lot of people when they go through those periods, whether it's painting or drawing, yeah. they get in some intuitive understanding about what looks good and, and composition and all the other stuff. So yeah, that's right. not me. <laughs> I don't, I don't have an intuitive understanding yeah. of any of that. No. And, I, and I also don't want people to think it's required. Yeah. I don't want people to think that, that this is some kind of, big empty space and you've got to flap about in it yeah. and, and, and kind of build your own intuition and stuff. Sure. Um, and then where I started with, with miniature painting was, was like most people, you know, mm. your, your older brothers, your, your other family members or friends yeah, get right. into miniatures and then start with Warhammer. I think it was third edition. Wow. All right. Yeah. And then, and then you kind of paint them based on the box art because yep. you, you kind of get the sense that you have to do. Yeah. Uh, and then for a long time, um, playing 40k mm. from sort of the fourth and fifth editions and then to going to a couple of competitions in, you know, mostly in eighth and some in yeah. seventh all very casually mm. but it was always painting for me was like uh i have to get I my three colors on yeah. i gotta get it done mm -hmm. uh and then for 
for a while there, that was kind of all that it was. It was a chore. It was a barrier between yeah. the thing that I wanted to do mm-hmm. um, and the thing that I am doing. So not playing, have to get through the painting to get through yep. the playing. Yep. Um, and it also kind of had a an, an unrealistic, uh, baseless impression that your figures needed to be painted to play. Yeah. So when you go to some events and there's some organizers where that is absolutely true. Yeah, for sure. But, it, you know, it, a lot of people would be like, man, uh, especially in the bolt action community, like, yeah. man, I don't care. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just get him out. Let's and then so figures down. Let's play. Yeah. Yeah. A um, couple of years ago, probably about three or four, um, probably just after I graduated uni, mm. I kind of realized that one of the things that I really enjoy doing is learning stuff. Yeah. Uh, I kind of knew that beforehand, but it kind of... And you're at uni. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I chose something that I wanted to study. Yeah. Um, and for a while, I just thought it was like, oh, this is the thing that interests me. Mm-hmm. As I got through my studies and afterwards, I realized I'm just one of the people that likes the learning process. It's, yeah. just, it's just really cool for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I get a lot out of it, both being, regardless of which side of it I'm on. Uh, and then And then once I kind of became consciously aware of that, I was like, oh, man. I can do this with anything. Yeah, right. Uh, and then I was like, well, why don't I just do this with something I can share with other people? Yeah. Um, and there was a bunch of different things I, I got into. I got into fencing. I got into oh, martial really? arts and, and and a whole bunch of different stuff. <laughs> um, and I, I enjoyed all of those processes. But mm. it's kind of one of those things that y- you end up like learning a little bit about a lot of different things. You don't yeah. really end up getting good at them. Yeah, and yeah. and you can't sustain that. No. Even even uh you know I, I don't have children for example i've i've only got one full time job now two with the podcast <laughs> uh, mate i wish this was a full time job <laughs> it feels like it some days um <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. even then and just in terms of sanity like i'm not i'm not a workaholic yeah like i don't i don't enjoy working no. i enjoy learning i'm just mm-hmm. fortunate enough that all of the hobbies that i do i can still learn in them yep. um and then and then i kind of settled on painting it because yeah. it it ended up being one of those things that you can do in your own time. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different things you can access, right? With the martial arts, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Even if you pick one that has a lot of different schools, you got to pick the right teacher. Yeah, for sure. Because um, teaching is a separate skill set, uh, just like completely learning. Completely different, yeah. <laughs> Everybody can knows that one teacher that they had that knew their stuff but couldn't teach them. Yeah. Um, and same, I guess, w- with management and Oh, being yeah. efficient. The best salesman doesn't make the best manager. Correct. Yep. Um, and you often do a disservice to the team by pulling your experts out and yep. getting them to manage teams yeah, yeah. instead. So, and that and that's what painting ended up becoming for me, uh, except it's it's one of those things that I was really able to maintain that momentum on. Yeah. Uh, and I think I've made some pretty good progress in the last 18 months or two years. I'd say. You won a freaking <laughs> painting competition. I didn't win. I got third place. I say you got third place in a painting comp. Your first, first paint, first paint. Uh, so, so that's not to say that I'm not, I'm not proud of it. Yeah, um, but I just want to caveat that <laughs> that uh, I'm, I'm very proud of that achievement, and it was a surprise. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, it was mm. a surprise. I didn't, I didn't sort of go in there to win. Um, I just went in there to do the best that I possibly could. Yeah, I happened to walk away with bronze, yeah. which is fantastic. It's- um, yeah. And so that was my first scale model at a hundred uh, sorry one thirty fifth scale. Yeah. Uh, and it was my second ever scale modeling attempt. Okay. Um, the f- the first one was probably about six months before that. Yeah. For Iron Signet twenty twenty. Now you said scale modeling. So do you consider what you're doing at the moment different to, um, like painting as if you were going to a tournament? Yeah. 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 So. So this is a this is a challenge I've had recently, mm-hmm. um, a, a mental block. Yeah, is that I have never, ever, ever been the kind of person who's just like do it perfect or don't do it at all. Yeah, that's never been me. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not that person. Yeah, I'm the get it done guy. Yeah, uh, and then and then pushing myself to to sort of I insignate and 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 going from tabletop standard to what's called display standard. Mm-hmm. I ended up in this place where I just couldn't be bothered painting because it wasn't going to be perfect. Yeah, okay. And it took me months to figure that out. <laughs> but Oof. the reason, the distinction I make between scale modeling and, and the other painting mm-hmm. particularly is because scale modeling is a lot more emphasis on construction. Right. Um, the, it's an important part of any miniature painting is the construction process. Yep. But it's usually hiding the construction process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, sure. particularly when you talk about tanks, and I love tanks, <laughs> 
Um, they're big. They make a lot of noise. They have big cannons. They're bulletproof. Like, what's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> what we all aspire to be in life. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> and I will leave all of the euphemisms on the table. <laughs> uh, you know, what's not to love? Uh, yeah. And and when you look at a tank, I'm not sure if you've seen one up close and mm. really appreciated them. The first thing that strikes you is this is deep terror. Yeah. Right. Because you look at it and it's just this cold, heartless thing that mm. will just destroy anything at once. Yeah. Uh, and so then that once you look past that, you can, of course, see the construction mm -hmm. in the actual vehicle. Yeah. And and for me, trying to capture both of those two things that um, kind of uh, <laughs> the, the way that I kind of figured it is just like completely um, disregarded brutality yeah. in the sense that the tank th has absolutely no awareness yeah. that anything else is alive around it and mm -hmm. it will just destroy. And trying to capture that, because you see that when you look at a tank, yeah. like on a real fundamental level, if you stand yeah. next to a Centurion or I think there's an Abrams on display at AWM and there's a, at Fremantle Barracks, there's a couple of vehicles out. All right. And, and when you go and stand in front of one of them, you're just like, this thing is completely ambivalent that I exist and it will destroy me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. trying to capture that in a scale model is kind of, kind of my thing yeah right um and so that's that was the distinction that i was making mm. is is between miniature painting for display and yeah. scale modeling is that there's a lot more emphasis on construction yeah uh and not just as part of the process but as part of your artistic process as your right. part of artistic yeah, yeah. licenses is, is going i'm going to put my touch in this model mm. and i'm going to start the moment i open the kit yeah not when i finish assembling it Right. And I wish you told <laughs> me that a week ago. Well, <laughs> yeah, and so uh, the yeah, the painting journey for me has been quite a quite a I think compressed. Yeah. is is probably the best way to put it. Um a lot of the people that I've been talking to, I'm big on mentality. Yeah. I'm big on understanding why, mm -hmm. and I think that's given me um some advantages in being able to take some big steps. Mm. Okay, interesting. And so you went from just kind of learning what what kind of pushed you to go in, enter like um the kind of scale mod modeling kind of field because you you had the first attempt yeah um which I'll chuck up a photo here now <laughs> and then you had your second attempt so second photo <laughs> um, instructions to future Tyler yeah, <laughs> that's it do your job um yeah and so like I mean the the difference. When you see the first one, you're like, amazing. Thank wow. you. Thank and you. then you see the second one, you're like, how does this just get better and better? Like, <laughs> Thank you. you just, the difference between the two, even from a layman's eyes, you're like, yeah. wow. Yeah. But like, how did you get to that first model? Like, because you've told us a little bit about mm -hmm. your history of mm -hmm. painting, but wait, it, it, the, that, that bit just before. <laughs> just before the first one? Yeah. Um, look, that one was what I would consider to be uh, a... or. I'm trying to be fair to myself, but also equally critical. Um, I think what I did, what I decided with that one is, is I was going to do this the best way that I knew how. Yeah. The problem was that I didn't know a lot of the why. Yeah. Um, and so I'm a, I'm a scientist by trade. Yeah. So the main thing about the way, the best way that we do stuff is mm. you map out the whole thing start to finish. Right. What you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how long it's going to take, how much of all of your materials you're going to require, mm. what the expected outcome is, and right. you do all of that before you do any of it. And so that's exactly what I did with my Iron Signet entry. I was like, you know, I, I've got some okay brush control. My color theory is terrible, but it doesn't matter because it's a historical mm. piece. Yep. Um, I also didn't realize this, but my composition was, in terms of basing and diorama, it was um, kindergarten level stuff. Yeah. And again, I didn't, that was a black hole for me. Mm. I didn't know that that was a, yeah. uh, that it's was like a weak point. you don't know point. what you don't know. Kind of Correct. Thing. Yeah. And so, but, but what do I do know is I do know that that's what an M10 looks like. Yeah. I know that there's a couple of guys on YouTube who do some awesome construction techniques. I wanted to try them. Night Shift being the main one yeah. is pretty much my YouTube Bible for scale yeah. modeling techniques. You, you talk about him all the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't necessarily think he's, he's the best. I haven't yeah. watched all of the scale modelers out there on YouTube, all the ones in the world. Yeah. There's just, I very much like his style mm. um, of, of content, not just, he's not necessarily the best explainer, 
Yeah. But he's the best depictor of the process. Sorry, no, I <laughs> Well, the <laughs> thing is, there's because he's got he's been doing it for so long. Yeah. He's got a really good ingrained intuition. Yeah. And so he just looks at something and goes, it doesn't look right. Mm. But he can't explain why. Yeah. Which is of course the real challenge for the beginner. Of course. Is is developing that yeah. pattern recognition. Well, it's that whole thing of like uh teaching is a completely different skill. Correct, correct. But but the thing is, he shows you enough about his process that if you look back and forth and you watch his video about 15 times, all of the information is <laughs> actually in there. Yeah. Uh, and so that that's what I did. I was like, what is the process that I'm going to take with my M10 start to finish? Mm. And I literally mapped it all out. Yeah, right. And my weakest part of it was weathering, which I had done and understood the least of um, in terms of dust and pigment. And my, my bigger, weaker part on top of that mm. was my base composition, yep. which was not in my plan. Yeah. And so it's absolutely no surprise to me that that was the worst part. Yeah. My plan ended at finishing the M10. Mm. It didn't, f or the Demon of El Guitar. It did not finish on having it on a base ready yeah, for right. submission. Yeah. And part of that was was my own misunderstanding of the rules of the competition. Mm. I understood it was going to be face up, not the actual, which is how I describe everything up to the face of the base yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Or everything above it, mm. not necessarily the base itself. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that, that was judged as part of the entry, mm. which is fine. I mean, it was in the rules. I could have clarified at any point in time. But the reason I didn't clarify it is because I didn't put it in my plan. Yeah. And that's just the kind of person that, that I am. It's the way that I look at things. Yeah. Is, is I had told myself that my end product was a completed tank. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a piece ready for submission. Yeah. And so my plan didn't extend to my piece ready for submission. Yeah, right. And of course, that's the sloppiest and worst part. Okay. And then how do I go from that to the next step up? Yeah. That one, I think, is really when I start having a conscious understanding of what it is that makes painting better. Mm. What it is, is going, you know, this piece looks good, yeah. and this piece looks good, and this one looks better, but not being able to articulate why. Yeah. And so my difference between, I think, my main leap between the two scale models yeah. was being I was having the time of understanding the why, building that kind of critical yeah, yeah. analysis in. Okay. Interesting. Wait, so just in case I want to paint myself into a bigger box. Nah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um could you like ready? Let's um this is uh close your eyes, take a deep breath. We're gonna go on a journey. Um, uh, I don't trust you enough in a soundproof room <laughs> to close my eyes. <laughs> oh um no what what is like because at some level, you have to make the active choice, right? To sit down and be like, I'm going to get this kit, I'm going to map it all out, and I'm yep. going to enter this into a competition. Yep. What was that decision? Like, can you kind of articulate that decision to go from, I'm painting bolt action to this is, I'm going to up my painting game? Um, th this is this is probably the part that I have the weakest answer for. Um, uh, and th this also might show, not necessarily my age, but my predilection for history yeah do you know jfk's speech why the moon um i am like an acquaintance of it sure I'm mildly familiar with the, it the key tagline is we choose to do these things not because they are easy but because they are hard yes i am one of those people okay i don't like easy yeah i don't like sitting in my comfort zone mm -hmm. my thing is always how do I get out of my comfort zone? Because right. I know that's where I learn. Mm -hmm. And so I become very, um, that's not to say I'm comfortable outside my comfort zone. <laughs> I think a lot of people think that, um, uh, you know, there are personality types yep. where when they step out of their known, they're, you know, they're chill yeah. and they're zen. This there's no anxiety. No, 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 no. There no. is still anxiety. There's still fear. There's still self-doubt. Um, there's, there's still the confidence issues, the insecurities. Mm. They all mount up. Uh, of course, I can't speak for others. Yeah. As much for me as I understand they do for others. Yeah. But I know that stacking up next to all of those negative emotions mm. and most importantly in that frustration is the learning process. Yeah. Right? Is all of that learning, is that opportunity for new knowledge. I know that's where that sits for me. So you have to push through that self-doubt and that anxiety and everything. I've come to accept that that's the other side of the coin. Yeah. And so some days I get it. Some days are easier than others, mm. and some days are a lot harder than others. Yeah, as I, as I'm sure you've witnessed, oh, yeah. <laughs> is that. It, but I know that that's where it is for me. Yeah, I know that's where that learning happens, mm -hmm. and so I know that when I'm chill, I know that I'm not learning. Yeah, and because I'm just like, there's a whole universe out there of mm. stuff. Oh yeah, why don't I just go and learn? Yeah, something? no, I've definitely seen you in in on both sides of the coin. Like you're like, yeah, this is going great, and then you're like. There's so many different world types. How do I know which one to use? 
<laughs> yeah. And so specifically, how did I go like from painting bolt action to going, I'm going to submit an entry into Iron Signet? Yeah. I, l- I literally scrolled, scrolled past it. I saw the event. I was like, oh, hey, I've not heard of these guys before. Mm-hmm. Looked at the rules pack and I was like, oh, they don't, it's not podium. Yeah. They, 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 they draw lines in the sand. He goes, oh, I'm going to get some good feedback. Yeah. I want to get better at painting. Yeah, okay. And then I was like, oh, I don't really have a kit. What kit do I have? And I just on my shelf was an M10 um, <laughs> that I picked up for like $10. Yeah. A, uh, I think it was a uh, Boxing Day sale yep. from Warlord Games Direct. It was like I, M10s are terrible in belt action. I've since come to learn that they're actually not bad. Yeah. But I was like, I'm never going to use it. I got it because it was $10. Yeah. I might as well just throw this kit together yeah, and nice. do the best that I can. Mm. Um, and that, that, was, that was literally that decision. I went, I'm chilling here painting my US uh, and, I'm, and I've gotten a routine. I've got my recipe. I've got my process for it. I'm like, well, and then this, I scroll past this and I, and I, I do the same thing. I, I suspect everybody goes through the same motion. Goes, oh, why bother? What, what have I got to gain? Yeah. I've got so much to lose. Mm. But for me, it wasn't, it's never about the outcome for me. It's always yeah. about the process. It's for always sure. about the journey. And I knew that in that journey to Iron Signet, there was going to be a lot of learnings. And yep. Oh boy, they were. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, it, it, yeah, it, like that makes so much sense. Like you were just scrolling past. And I'm not as, uh, I don't know. It, it, for me, it's taken it a little bit more like smacking over the head of like, <laughs> hey, Iron Signet exists. Do it. Do it. Do it and mostly by you, of and I know people, <laughs> and uh, but to be fair, we have an understanding. Yeah, no, right? for yeah. sure. I'm not. I'm not doing that to 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 be rude. Yeah, no, and no, I'm no. not doing it to bully you. No, I'm doing it because I know that you're also a person who likes learning. For sure, and and, yeah. and I know, and you've said so much to me that you want to get better yes, at painting. For sure, and so so then that's why I do it because I'm I know that I have I guess more impetus. Mm more thumos if you want to use the greek <laughs> word th- than other people yeah. i know that when i see something that's outside my comfort mm. zone i will take the jump faster than for some sure, others for sure and that's not a not a judgment yeah. or criticism of other people that's just a yeah, question no, I, I, I mean i don't think it's a personal attack but i take it personally <laughs> <laughs> no and and that leads me into a lot of hot water yeah right is because i do things because i think i can do them mm. i think not necessarily like arrogance oh i can do this but mm. like i'm gonna go ahead and try it yeah and i will disregard negative risks and consequences yeah. <laughs> and and it's got me in a lot of hot water in a lot of different yeah. places not just personally but also professionally there's mm. a lot of th- situations where i'm going i really should have actually just thought about that yeah. for about 15 seconds yeah i'm um, just imagining like the back of a painting competition I'm like <laughs> yeah you came to the wrong game <laughs> you're like oh, i didn't think this through enough <laughs> no the, anyway. the base is a perfect example yeah it's because because i was i was like i jumped into the painting competition and i didn't i didn't actually think about having a submitted yeah. a, a completed entry for a submission mm. i thought about completing my vehicle which yep. is of course i could have submitted it without a base and i dodged the whole bullet but yep. i was like everybody's gonna expect a base yeah says the guy who didn't plan to do a base <laughs> <laughs> submitting his own no piece. one else is going to forget a base it'll just be you <laughs> yeah 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 and i was like they're gonna expect one like you can't just submit and 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 i don't know why but you know you have that thing where when when that's that insecurity or somebody yep. points something out, it's the only thing you can see. Oh, for sure. And and I remember asking people, I was like, oh, do I need a base? And everybody was just, and then that was the only thing I could see in all of my socials. Yeah. Anytime I looked on Instagram or yeah. YouTube or looked at like Night Shift and, he, and he'd finish a project and be like, now we're going to do a base. <laughs> and like, of course, damn it. Of course, he's only done bases for like at less than 10% yeah. of his projects. Yeah. But I'm like, He's doing one. Yeah. I gotta do one. It's like confirmation <laughs> bias, right? You buy mm, a, uh, more or a less. Toyota, and yeah, you see Toyotas yeah. all over the road. Correct. It's I a think form. I use that right. More or less. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I got where you're going. Let's yeah. not nitpick. Um. So, uh, so I've got a couple more questions. I'm for here you, for of it. course, of course. Um. So, what's your favorite model that you have ever painted, and and why? Obviously, it would be nice favorite to know. I've painted and why? Yeah. Um. This is gonna be. I hope this is going to be a surprising answer. Okay. Um, but it's got to be the M4 Sherman that Nick at RHG donated to me. He, he, I was starting US and yeah. he just gave me the Sherman. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not my best work. Yeah. I know it's not my best work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, l- especially looking back on it now. Mm. Um, but for me then at the time, I did not care what it looked like. I cared... 
because it, I just fell in love with the silhouette, with the fact that yeah. somebody could do something so kind. And like, it's it's only a thirty or forty dollar model that he yeah. was never going to use anyway. Uh -huh. And he said as much to me. He doesn't play U.S. and he wasn't going to use them for his British anyway. Yeah, yeah. But he's just the guy barely knew me. Mm. He's in bolt action. He goes, oh, you like U.S. Here, use this. Yeah. And and I painted it not because I felt I had to. That was mm. probably one of the first models where. Not only did I want to try my best and and improve my painting, yeah, yeah. but I also just kind of was really passionate about the model, yeah. and was just like, I just want to do the best that I can, yeah. And and looking at it uh, not for the purpose of getting better, but just to kind of do it justice, you know, yeah. Um, you know, like when somebody gives you a present for something that you might not normally do or an activity, you're just yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm gonna yeah. go try this because yeah. somebody thought that of I course. would like it, of course. Uh, and so, and that was when, um, I my main motivation was not my desire to get better. Yeah. That was when my main motivation was, was passion for a project. Yeah. And I know that talking to some of the other guys, some of the really top tier painters, they're like, we don't care about competition cycles. We find a model and we paint it because we want to. Yeah. If it's, if a competition comes up and we have a completed project for submission, yeah, right. we will then submit. And, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, like if you're doing this at a level where, you know, you're golden demon or whatever, you're doing it, there, there is yes. a certain level. Yes. Like, you're, you're learning it, and yeah, you yeah. love to learn. These guys love to paint, yep. and that's why they're always going to be, because yeah. they will spend 12 hours a day or whatever just painting, because that's what and they love doing. Perfection is not is not something that they strive for. It is demanded of them yep. by the project. For sure. The the, the Tidecaster, for example, mm. Life's one, it, it just looks at him and goes, you have to make me perfect. Yeah. It won't accept less. No. And, and, and that was, and, and like, honestly, if you looked at, Lady Luck yeah. and compared it against Demon of El Guitar, mm. you wouldn't believe that those tanks are less than a year apart. Yeah. No, it, I don't. <laughs> and and it you won't, hopefully, you guys won't believe it when Tyler puts it on screen. No, it, it, it honestly <laughs> it terrifies me looking yeah. at that because I'm like, fuck, you can, I mean, <laughs> you can get that good that fast. Like, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so that that was that was kind of the, mm. the main thing. There was, it was a close tie between that one and my Scions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, my Scions was a very similar um, Venn diagram. Yeah. Um, a different Nick gifted me those Scions. <laughs> uh, as, as a very old friend who, who now lives over east. Mm. So shout out to you, Nick. You're probably going to get another mention in this episode. Um, that, the same thing again. I just really liked the look of them. I saw yeah. a really cool theme. Somebody said, I've got some lying around. You can just yeah. have them because I'm not going to use them. Mm. And it was the same thing um, there. Yeah. But I think it was, I wasn't as, um, I wasn't as like proud of them as they came out. Yeah. Because with the thing was the Lady Luck, it looked exactly how I imagined it. Yeah. Lady Luck is the, the Sherman. Yeah. Exactly how I imagined it. Where the Scions were like 80% of the way there. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's not a criticism of, of the, the model, of course. Yeah. It's a cr <laughs> criticism of yeah. me. Yeah. And now looking back, I know why. Like I didn't use, my primer was too thick and, and all of these other yeah. little things just mm. didn't come together. And don't get me wrong, like Lady Luck, no one's going to look at it and go, yep, award winning. Yeah. You're like, you got two shades of green, man. What the hell do I care? Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, but again, it was just yeah. a... It, it's, it's a personal achievement. It, that was the vision that I had and mm. I nailed it. Yeah. Uh, and that and that was, that. was that's why I had to choose Lady Luck yeah. over the Scions. It's really interesting because um, firstly, same Nick who gave you the Sherman gave me the panther I'm currently working on. <laughs> so thanks for that, Nick. Did the same thing. I was like, oh, I, like I have this World War Tunes, but I'm thinking I might get this other one, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the same reason that I explained in the video previously. Like, I, th in case someone goes, I don't want to verse that, I want Because your game only. system with silhouettes or whatever. Sure, well, yeah. Uh, even though the silhouette's bigger, so you can shoot. Well, whatever. Whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and he was like, just got this kit lying at home. And I'm pretty sure the tag's still on it in the last video. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a $40 kit and he yeah, just gave yeah, it to me. I was like, yeah. thanks, man. And <laughs> yeah, and the same thing, like wanting to make it look good um, had prevented me from doing it. And even more so, um, I've spoken about them on here on, on the podcast yeah. before. Dan's um, yeah, yeah. Plague Marines and like same, his entire Same block. Because you want to do them justice. I want them to be perfect. Yeah. They need to be perfect. And like I've had the... Yeah, I've had the cultists sitting on my desk with like yep. three colors on them. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to do anything else because I'll f mess them up. And at this level, at least they're playable, but I can come back and finish them when I'm better. But I should just bite the freaking bullet. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you're probably sick and tired of hearing this. But the the mentality that that I have against perfection 
is that my second attempt will be 50 times better than my first. Oh, that's, that's actually pretty good. And so the, the, the f- as soon as I can get that first attempt done, I know that the second one's going to be better. Yeah, yeah. And I can assure you, Dan is going to be very proud to see that massive improvement over two Plague Marines, yeah. let alone more of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, moving on to the next question. Um, what is your biggest aha moment while painting? This like, was like that moment you were like, oh, Eureka! Yeah. Uh, hopefully this will also be a surprising answer. Because <laughs> um, actually you were there for it. Oh. And I, and I, I would be very surprised if you pick it. Um, this is something that you're probably sick and tired of me hearing. About. <laughs> whenever, whenever you have a new experience, yes, you have so much more learning after the fact than you do in the moment. Yes, doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you genuinely take the time to think about that experience mm-hmm. and analyze it and critique it, you will continue to learn from it. Of course, my number one aha moment um, was actually the eye painting workshop run by Adrian. Ah. Yeah, so this was the first ever painting workshop I attended. Yeah. I think it was the first one for you as well. Yes, the and first the only time. one so far. <laughs> oh, come on, Tyler, step it up. Um, that was when uh, I think Adrian is in STEM, so yeah. I think that kind of helped where he was coming from, or yeah, at yeah. least at the very least, whether it's not intuitive, it's trained. Yeah. He's a very process-driven individual, mm-hmm. or at least – that was what he portrayed yeah. when it came to the eye painting workshop. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much of it you remember, but the thing that really struck me about the eye painting workshop was that it required very little skill and it required even less uh, creativity. Yeah. Now, that's not to say I'm not detracting from No, that. God, no. No. What I'm trying to emphasize is how well he understood that process yeah. and how well he was able to teach it. Yeah. Com- completely demystified it yeah um so that there was kind of a there's a double-edged aha here Mm -hmm. one of them is is very abstract in the sense that uh composition color theory brush control all of that sort of stuff are not mystical concepts no they are art in lowercase a they're not (laughs) art in capital yeah if you understand the distinction they are processes Mm. they have rules they can be understood now that's not to say that you have to follow the rules yeah because as you know, some of the best films out there are the ones that break the rules. Yeah. Because uh, film is your thing. Uh, but it, that's kind of understanding them and knowing you have to know when to break them. Sorry, let me try that again. You have to understand them to know <laughs> yeah. when to break them yeah. to know that it works. Know why the fence is put up before you break the fence down. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And, and so that's those are all really important things to understand. For sure. And once uh, sitting, watching that um uh, sitting through that workshop, I was just like, it's all just a process. It all has rules. <laughs> and so that was my like abstract yeah. reasoning. And the, the one that I keep coming back to yeah. is just whenever I get really frustrated, it's like, why doesn't this work? I'm like, mm. no, it has rules. It has mechanics. It has levers. Just break it down. Yeah. Um, and then the really, really core mechanical one yeah. uh, that kind of touches on, I, I'm remembering the questions now, yeah. it touches on the, the next following questions. Yeah. Um, Layers, 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 layers. Get out. <laughs> and I'm not talking about layering your paints. No. What I'm talking about is, remember, if you remember the eye painting workshop, it was how to paint anatomical eyes. Yes. And of course, we had a big beholder model. Mm-hmm. This is a benefit for all the people at home. Yeah. And oh. again, just photos. There'll be a photo up. And again, um, I'm just going to remind you of this because I know that you know this and mm-hmm. I know you've got your little handout at home. Yeah. And that when, thing is amazing. When you look at that handout, I want you to remember this. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, the first thing that we did was we literally sat down and spent five or ten minutes talking about all of the anatomical features of the eye. Yeah. And then we painted the anatomical features based on depth. And I don't know how consciously aware you, how conscious oh, you are yeah. of that. But the first thing that we started of painting on the eyeball was, was the muscles yeah, that suspend the, the eyeball. Yeah. Yeah. We painted the whole thing a desaturated red. Yeah. So you had the ligaments. What mm. did we paint next? We painted the, the White. whites yeah. of the eyes. Right? And because that's the next thing you see in a layer. What did we paint next? You painted the, the iris. Yeah. And then you painted the pupil. Yeah. And then you painted the blood vessels. And then you painted the reflections on the eye. Yeah. That is the layers that they exist in, my friend. Incredible. Yes. And then I realized, I was like, everything is just layers. Mm. Why does this model look good? And it's because the layers are painted so I can see them, so I know that they exist. And they're also, again, as a... 
there's another even more mechanical step in this one. Paint your models in the layers that are on the model. If your model has skin and then rat, uh, fatigues and then a soft armor, then a yeah. hard armor plate and then decals on the armor mm. plate, paint them in that order. And it's much harder to stuff it up <laughs> and not paint in the lines. That helps in that way. But that was the real thing about armored fighting vehicles and what yeah. really helped me understand weathering. Because uh, for timeline context, it was uh, M4 Sherman, Lady Luck. Yep. Then it was M10 Demon of Elgatar. Uh-huh. Then it was the eye painting workshop. Yep. And then it was my uh, scale modeling entry. Yeah. Uh, Curse Knocker. Yep. The 136, uh, 135th, sorry. Um, the Panther that I painted. Yep. And if the me- that is, I think, in my opinion, the main difference between the M10 and the Panther mm. at a conceptual level is that you cannot see the layers on my M10. Yeah. The Panther, right. all layers. Yeah. And, and when I'm talking about layers of an armored fighting vehicle, this goes back to what I was saying before. Your construction is your first point of artistic license. Mm-hmm. That is the base fundamental layer of your project. It all makes sense. Yeah. The next layer on top of that is, if you want to get technical, is things like armor texture. Yeah. Because armor is not a flat panel, weld beads and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Then comes... And Zimmerit? Uh, Zimmerit. Sh- 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 Zimmerit. <laughs> yes. But that's right at the end. Zimmerit's right at the end. Zimmerit was not applied during construction, my friend. Oh. Zimmerit was applied right at the end. Right. And okay. it helps to understand that when you actually apply your Zimmerit and paint it. Yeah. And then and then you've got, so you've got your armor texture. Mm. Then you have the factory primer. Then you have the base undercoat. Then you have... Uh, then you can start talking about color modulation because it yeah. works in that color... Paint will fade and stuff like yeah. that. Then you work into your weathering. And now what happens when you scratch that tank? It goes, goes through the, all of the layers. The layers yeah. And different scratches will do different things yeah. to different layers. Right. There are some scratches that won't peel off your paint. It will just lift it. Yeah. So you'll get what's called a superficial chip. Yeah. And that looks like a really bright version of that paint. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what happens after that? Then you expose the armor plate after knee. What happens to exposed metal? It rusts. Rust. And what happens to when it's rusted long enough, it starts building a different texture. You get that kind of like sandy sandpaper texture. Yes. And then it's, uh, I don't mean to undermine the the consciousness or, or the cognizance that, to do this. Yeah. But when you do that, when you understand this, it is so simple. Yeah. And then the next layer that has, happens is caked on mud. Then you get dried on mud yeah. and then you get dust on top of that. Yeah. And all of those will change depending on the environment. If you're in the wet slop of the eastern front on a thawing winter, yeah. there's not going to be any dust. <laughs> <laughs> there's not going to be any dust. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's easy to understand that when you understand the layers and also understand your project. Because mm. right? it's not just about a panther. It's about depicting a particular type of panther. Yeah. The part that I'm, the, the layer that I'm very weak at now is the the story layer, mm. which is of course the last one, but it informs every one of your other decisions. Yeah, what I was trying to depict with my Panther was Unternehmen uh, uh, Citadel or Operation Citadel, also known as Battle of Kursk. Yeah, popularly, which is that why was kind I called of it Kursk Knocker. Yep, right? and it was kind of the more um, uh, kind of the first real outing of Panthers. Yeah, right. Not strictly speaking, but mm. more or less. Uh, and so I wanted it in an ambush position. Yeah. And so that's why the guys are out and they're looking yeah, through yeah. and stuff and they're, they're kind of looking at each other and they're all looking really stressed yeah. and their uniforms are all prim and proper because they're they're new armored core, new tanks, so they gave yeah, them yeah. new uniforms. And that's why the tank is more or less clean except the sk- side skirts because the, the side skirts are, are cheap metal. They're not, they're, they're sheet metal. Yeah. They're, they're used to deflect, not deflect, to... Um, deviate the trajectory of of uh, anti-tank rifles they're not they're not armor plates they're not yeah, right. all of the other stuff yep. and so and then the real small detail that i don't quite think i was able to communicate very well is that panther driver training or panther training in general was actually quite poor compared to the yep. other vehicles yep. um the driver situated front left of the vehicle um other other German tanks, they're positioned in different places. Mm-hmm. So if you go from a Panzer forward to a Panther, I think the driver position changes. But in any case, right. the dimensions are very different. Now, if you've learned to drive, the corner you are least aware about is the one that's furthest away from your driving position. Yes. Right? And so if you look at my Panther, 
where are all of the driving scratches? They're on the back right corner. Fantastic. <laughs> Right, and so, but nobody's going to know that, but it just helps to sell it. Yeah. And same as the side skirts, they don't stay on. They get torn off the right side. Same as the fender on the front right. Yeah. If you look at any of the historical photos, the only time they have their side skirts installed is fresh out of the factory yeah. if they weren't shipped on trains. Mm. And if they were shipped on trains, actually hung over the carriage, so they weren't installed anyway. Oh, wow. And so, but these are things that you can, that inform you in your project. Yeah. You don't need to do them. You don't need to do all the other stuff. Reference photos will communicate that to you subtly. Yeah. But the important, this all circles back to layers. Yeah. Right? You cannot build your layers if you don't understand what the layers are. Yeah. And of course, you will shift, you'll pull the layers one way or another day based on the story. Yeah. Which is why before I started painting Demon of El Guitar, I went, where are the M10s? Where were they mm -hmm. all deployed? What are all the things that, what are all the stories that I can tell on my tank? Um, that I can imply on my tank yep. that will actually, if somebody is informed, they will go, oh, nice. Yeah. And if they're not, they'll ask me questions. Mm. Why is it called Demon of El Guitar? Why does it have five kill strikes on its side? Yeah. All, all of these little details will help sell uh, the narrative. Because if you look at, I know we talked about these tanks being called steel beasts when they're in museums. Yeah. But if you look at them in combat scenarios, yeah. even... And, and again, you have to be mindful that World War II photos were all propaganda, right? Because cameras yeah. were expensive and yeah, yeah. other sorts of stuff. Those are still, like, just look at the still image. Mm. And and again, as a, as a student of film, yeah. you will you will see the movement. Yeah. You will see all of the others. Even There's at, personality. Correct. Uh, and it's about capturing that of in course. your vehicle yeah. uh, or your project. Mm. And and it's that story stuff that I'm not very good at, at communicating. Yeah through the piece without actually explaining it to somebody. Of course. I because mean, it's a completely different set of skills. Well, but again, it is still a process. It still yeah. has rules. Oh, for sure. I just I just haven't focused yeah. on them as I have on the other no, stuff. No, it's like when you're writing a script or yeah. even a book. Like, it's formulaic. Right. We know what's going to happen in a Marvel movie. Yeah. The good guys are going to win, yeah. right? Like yeah, yeah, eventually. Yeah. Eventually, but... How they get there is yeah. still an enjoyable experience for our monkey brain that goes, ah, story, <laughs> good, dopamine. Yeah, uh, and like uh, same as tragedies and all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. They have, we they we have know. Rules. We know. We know the steps. We know how it works. And yeah. Um, yes. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. I really like, I can see in my head like all the different layers and stuff on. Even um, I'm thinking about, for whatever reason, the, um, the Nurgle guys at the moment. Yep. Well, yep. Maybe because they're sitting next to me and being like, paint me, <laughs> yeah. paint me. Same again with the Nurgle guys, right? Mm. If you start with the organs, yeah. the rest of it's all going to come together. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... um, It'll paint itself yeah. at that point. I mean, most of... I'm doing cultists, and so none of them have, like, right, the okay. gribbly yeah. bits. But, um, like, even their cloaks and stuff, like, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm like, mm -hmm. it's just one green, and I can really get some layers down and just practice. Yep. Um, I think that's really what I have to do. Um, But, moving on... And this is kind of the crux of why I did this mm -hmm. entire episode. Um, so I'm painting my panther. Yep. What is one technique that you could pass on to a beginner, okay, myself, yep. um, that I will then in uh, this week's video try and, um, and try and emulate? This is a tricky one, just picking one. Um, you, cause you've, have you finished assembling? Yep. Okay. Like all of it? So I've got, I've assembled it. Yep. Um, I haven't put the shirts in on uh -huh. um, because I haven't put the tracks on because you, you actually told me don't do that. It's it's a horrendously painful job to yep. try to paint the tracks. So I've got it. Yep. It's in sub-assembly. Perfect. Like the turret comes yep, off. Yep, and perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. But it's all assembled. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, you know, again, because we talk about it being formulaic, but the formula is ultimately the one that you choose to apply. Yep. There's lots of different formulas. Mm -hmm. um, when it, Okay. So... Bonus, I'm going to give you two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For an absolute beginner, yeah. the two textures, the two things I would 100% recommend to level up your thing is learn how to pin wash. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to teach you and go through it. Yeah. And the other one is add some texture. Mm -hmm. Textures take, honestly, we can do the whole tank in 10 minutes. Yep. 100% 10 minutes. Okay. And then when you get to the stuff like if you wanted to, because it's 156 scale, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, so color modulation becomes a bit, not unnecessary, but becomes trickier and you have to be a bit bit yeah, smarter yeah. about it. I think we actually talked about in that one episode where yeah. you're looking at it and you're like, oh, it's not, the, the, the transition isn't right. And then you look at it, you're like, oh, 
actually. When it's this far away, it's fine. Like Yeah. Yeah, but also <laughs> with a display piece, you can't get away with the three-foot rule. Yeah, no. Um, it's just that, so where I was going on with is um, compression. Um, there's not really an example here. Uh, if you, sorry, you guys can't see this. If you look at the ceiling, mm-hmm. um, don't look at the light directly. <laughs> but if you look at <laughs> sort of just next to the light all yeah. the way to the corner of the wall, yeah. you can see that gradient. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. see it on the on the red panels behind us. I'm not sure if the cameras are good enough to pick it up, but even then, like, yeah. you've got a darker red here and going into a lighter red. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yes. But the main thing is you have to compress that gradient by 56. Oh, because it's scale 56. Yes. Right. So you need to have the same colors. They just have to be right next to each other. And yeah. this is what I'm saying. The color modulation becomes tricky. Yeah. Because um, that's that's a light thing. Yeah. Um, and, and color modulation is when you look at a flat panel wall mm-hmm. that's one color, you actually realize it's not. Yeah. So that's what I mean. It gets tricky. Yeah. But the reason the reason I say textures is because if you want to, if you, it gives you a layer. Yeah. It adds depth where mm-hmm. there is none. And that's really powerful. So it, what do you use for texturing? Um, you can use uh, plastic glue is probably the main one. Okay. Because yeah. at the moment, my Zimmerit already has built on. Yes. Oh, sorry, my Panther already has built on Zimmerit. Uh, I would then um, probably. Okay. Bonus one, texture and the bin. Um, pin washing. Mm. Uh, what a lot of people do is they will wash the whole tank or they will wash the whole figure in one color. Yes. And that is um, perfectly legitimate, yes. except you're confusing two different techniques. Right. One of them is washing. Mm. The other one is filtering. Mm. A lot of people understand this who have done a lot of washing, understand this to some level. They just don't understand they're different. Yep. If, you take, if you take one of your um, uh, no, uh, plague marines or your cultists yep. and you paint them green and then you paint null all over the whole armor panel, yes. you will get... A duller green. Yes, that's filtering. You're changing the color underneath. Yes. Uh, and then you will additionally get a darker color in the recesses. Yeah. That's washing. Pin washing is you do the washing without the filtering. Right. So you just literally sit there and you just put wash in the dark spots. Yeah. In in, in the grooves. Mm-hmm. Uh, with with your Zimmerit, you will, yeah, an all over wash will work on the Zimmerit won't work in your flat surface. Yeah. Because you'll get the coffee staining. Yeah. And you'll get that irregular color and stuff. Mm. So you can't really do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Yeah. Well, I'm encouraging you not to because there are yeah. better ways to achieve the same thing. Well, yeah, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. Is to learn. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the, the main like takeaway for a beginner is if you don't know already know how to do it, learn how to pin wash. Mm. Uh, and, and the reason you do that is, is because of this thing called value contrast. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm not talking about contrasting complementary colors uh-huh. like orange and teal, blue and red and all the other stuff. Yeah. What I'm talking about is if you take a photo that is really colorful and you put a grayscale f- uh, filter on it or mm. you take all of the color out, yeah. what is there a white and is there a black? That's value contrast. Right. So you might know that because of, of course. Yeah, well, I understand contrasting and lighting. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm coming at from the difference between white and black. Yeah. And all of the shades of gray in between. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about value contrast. Yeah, no, for sure. That is, if you, if you don't like the way that your model looks good, add more value contrast. Just keep doing it. So just go lighter and darker, lighter and darker, lighter yep. and darker. Yep. Just keep moving that difference between the two. And then, and then eventually you'll get to a point where you're just like, that's really nice to look at. Yeah. Our brains, our eyes love value contrast. Where, but like, where do you put the white and where do you put the black? The black. Right. And so there, there are, uh, and this is where um, AFVs or armored fighting vehicles get real tricky. Yeah. Because like a person, okay, you know, you do the whole zenith or highlight from yep. a certain angle. Yep. Can you do that with an AFV? Yep. Absolutely. You can and you should. Okay. So if you take the flat side panel of an armored fighting vehicle. Yep. Say, for example, like your Sherman's got a flat side. Yep. I think the Panther's slanted. Sherman's also have thin sides um, for those of you. I'm not, playing. <laughs> I'm not biting. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do the same thing, right? So uh, dry brushing, uh, Jacob's dry brushing is phenomenal That's at this. Right, because His mechanical skill for dry brushing is amazing. He's like, yeah, I just dry brush. But it's because <laughs> he's done it so many times, he knows exactly how to make he it He understands work. it. Yeah. And um, 
that's sorry, just quickly, that whole mechanical skill thing is makes perfect sense. Like it, art isn't I mean, it's art art with a capital A is yeah. the combination of art with a little yeah. the lowercase a. Like it's all yeah. just mechanical skill. Yep. And people are like, Why would you go to art school? <laughs> it's so you learn and people say that about film school too. <laughs> uh, it's so you learn the process. So you yep. learn the mechanical skills. So you understand you the can, why. And then yep. you can free up yourself for the creativity of it all. Yep. I mean, Jacob d- has done amazing things creatively with this mechanical skill that he has just basically perfected. But if you look at, um, he's not, he doesn't document all of his steps. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. He's got stuff he needs to get done. Yeah. Um, but you'll actually notice that he made a very big change in what he does. And I'm not talking mechanically. I'm talking process-wise. He used to prime a similar color to his dry brush yeah. and then dry brush up. Do, do you realize what he did in his recent um, Wehrmacht armored fighting vehicles? He primed them dark gray yeah. and he dry brushed them yellow or dunkelgelb, dark yellow. No, I didn't notice that. Right. And then if you look at his Panzer IV particularly, yeah. we'll, we'll put it up. Yeah. Look at uh, look at one of his side plates. Mm. Turrets are a good spot. Look at the top of the turret. It's almost white. It's like an off white yellow. Yeah. And then if you look at the bottom turret, almost a dark gray. That's not lighting. That's paint. And that's why it looks so good because of value contrast. You can do the same thing with your Panther. Now... This you have to be more mindful of this, mm. depending if you're planning on doing chipping. Yeah, um, and then there's a couple of different things you can do. But if you don't have access to an airbrush, you can achieve similar things. There are some things you can do with a dry brush instead of an airbrush, that, and, and vice versa. Yeah, but you can you can achieve a very similar effect. If you are um, if you are painting your panther pink, you might not want to spray start with a dark gray. You might start off with a very dark purple. Or maybe a very dark blue, or maybe a very dark red, mm. and then you just sit there and you just dry brush with. You can do multiple different saturated versions of pink, yeah, with different brightnesses. I've got about seventeen thousand different. If inks, you've got them, so. it, it saves you some mixing, mm. saves you some dry brush finesse, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, you start with the really brightest color, right? The the thing about dry brush is you can't you can't go back as easily, no, right? So. Yeah what I would encourage you to do is start with your darkest possible color. You have a rattle can if you can, Mm. no worries if not, just so you don't get the brush strokes. Uh, And then just work up. Start with uh, what I'm going to call black negative 10 and I'm going to call white 10, 10. positive 10, Mm. right? Start, base cut your negative 10 and then start with your five, then go neg five, then go with your zero, then then maybe a five, maybe a seven, and then just a little kiss of eight or nine yeah right and bit of color in there yeah almost white yeah and then you're going to look at this thing and you're going to be like this looks incredible so so so, and like if you're dry brushing the entire thing it's like heavy dry brush lighter dry brush lighter dry brush lightest dry brush kind of thing yep so you just keep like making it lighter and lighter in regards to like how close you are yep and then if you're planning on weathering you have to skew that a little bit so if you're if you're doing chipping the way that I do chipping, where you expose the surface underneath, uh, you can if you go with uh, rot brown, which is the red brown primer, yeah, um, more common sort of late war, that might clash with your pink, yeah. Uh, but if you go uh, feldgrau or mm. which is kind of the green gray, that just will look weird. Yeah, no, <laughs> um, it's going to have to be like a dark purple. Um, if you or or you could just go for a dark gray to expose the steel. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, but then, if you want to do that, you might want to skew away from rusting it, just because yeah. the colors might not look right. Having yeah. the dark, or all the different shades of orange next to the pink, or it might. Who knows? Um, in my head, it <laughs> seems pretty cool. I'm, I'm terrible with color theory, so I'd try it. Yeah. Um, but again, if you're going to do that, mm. you just have to be mindful about where you're going to place your chips. Yeah. And how dark that color is next to the chips. Yeah. Uh, and then, if you're going to add mud and all of the other things on top you have to push your value contrast so much further. Yeah. Because when you start weathering, you will filter all your all of your colors, colors yeah. back down. And so you will lose the value contrast. So w- when you say weathering, though, you're talking about like mud and stuff like that? Mud, dust, chips, scratches. But if you're doing that, it's, it's, it's not a wash. So how is it um, desaturating the colors? It's not desaturating. It's bringing them together. Okay. 
So you want them to look, you almost want them to look separate. Yeah. And then when you weather the bottom half, they're going to come together, but you're going to lose some of the di- dis- differentiation between the colors. Right. Which is fine because so that's what you want. So do you make the contrast? Yeah. Bigger? You have to go the contrast. If you are doing the weathering on top, yep. you've got to bring the contrast up because mm-hmm. then you're going to filter it back down. You might only filter down the bottom half, but it's going to help marry it all together. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah, I guess my beginner's tip is pin washing because of value contrast. Yeah. And then there's value contrast you can achieve in other ways. Mm, so cool. how's that for your single one technique for a beginner? It's fantastic. And I really hope <laughs> Dry this brush, helps. pin wash. Yeah, I really, it, I mean, it <laughs> really is that simple. But it's, uh, for me, it's that, that next level of explanation. Yep. That's yep. kind of why I started this series. Like, yeah. Because, you know. Um, you watch Miniac or yeah, yeah, uh, or whoever. Squidmar. Squidmar. Yeah. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> if you happen to see this video somehow, I absolutely adore all of you. Thank you, um, Squidmar, for your hair tutorial. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> um, but like those guys, yeah, they're next level. They're yep. not sitting here being like, "This is why you dry brush," or like getting to the granular detail yep. of it because the video is fifteen minutes long and it's more about more about watching the process than it <laughs> yeah. is yeah, explaining yeah, yeah. the process. Yeah. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um sure. so that's why I'm kind of sitting down, I'm like, tell me your secrets <laughs> yeah. in a more long format kind of area. Yeah. So yeah. like because yeah, there are uh, I guarantee at least I hope so there's, so there's an audience <laughs> for this. But I guarantee there's an audience out there who go, Cool, I understand dry brushing. Uh huh. But like how? Or like, but why? Yeah, or but why? Like, and how to up that dry brushing mm-hmm. game? Because mm-hmm. I can sit here and be like, yeah, I can dry brush three colors. Why am I doing this exactly? Yeah. How do I make this stand out and stuff yeah. like that? And why does my model look flat? Yeah. yeah. So uh, would you? So just quickly, would 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 you do a zenith or highlight? Wouldn't bother. Wouldn't bother. So just go, just prime it dark gray, or well, just gray, and just yeah. start there. Um, so zenith or highlights are really good. Mm-hmm. if you don't know what uh, light looks like on your model. Mm-hmm. The problem with Zenith highlights is that you either use an underpainting technique, yep. which is which is what contrast, capital C contrast is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a modern uh, implementation of, I think it's a Renaissance style of painting called underpainting, right. where rather than painting the color that you want, you paint, uh, contrasting color, and then you paint the color that you want on top in really thin right. layers. When you say capital C contrast, you mean the contrast range from Citadel. Yeah, yeah. it's an underpainting technique. Okay, Zenithal is really good for underpainting, mm-hmm. um, and it's also really good for showing you light placement. Yeah, not so good for AFEs. Right. Um, if you're going to Zenithal, as in black white, I'm talking specifically black white. Yeah. Um, don't bother. Yeah. Because what are you doing with your pinks? Right. You're zenithaling I with am. a dry brush. They are. They, they're, yeah. Yes. If we're going from negative 10 to 10, I'm already doing yes. the lighting work. Why do it with black and white if you're going to do it with pink? Right. Why paint twice? Well, the only <laughs> thing that I'm thinking about is that it doesn't have, you know, the thing that everyone seems to talk about, the light source. Like yep. it doesn't have a light source because I'll go all over the entire tank right, from but negative 10 to 10. Right, but tanks are satin. Metal is satin. Right. <laughs> and, and you're typically looking at them in broad daylight unless you're doing a nighttime diorama. Yeah. And they're... Big heavy things. Yep. If you put a small radial light source on it, like you would a miniature, mm. I'm not going to say it's going to look bad. Yep. It's just going to be harder to get right. Yep. So instead, just give it a top down, yep. a flat top down, which is again what Jacob has done. Yeah, with, dra- with his for sure fantastic and beautiful looking. I mean, almost vehicles. all of them. And uh, he's also, I mean, even mm-hmm. his troops, mm-hmm. his flamethrower dude. Yep, the OSL on that is incredible. Anyway, um, so, so yeah. another way of doing the. Another way you can use Zenithal for light maps is, is you do it and you take a photo, mm-hmm. right? But if if your model has mostly one color, don't do the black and white Zenithal. Just do the Zenithal with the color you're going to paint the guy. Yeah, right. Okay. There's a what a little tip that I got from uh, at Slave to the Rip on Instagram, also known as Will. Does incredible necromunda terrain. Yeah, and right. Fantastic painter. Mm. Um, if you have studio lights on your desk, you have a Zenithal highlight always. If the ah. light is above the model, stick your model under the light. That's where the light sits. Paint it. <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense. Makes amazing sense. Yeah. Um, cool. So one more question for you. Um, so this is uh, kind of thank you if you sat through all of this. You you painting experts, you. So we, we've talked to the uh, beginners, the amateurs, the, the starting outerers. What is your... Uh, hold on, I had, 
I really like the wording for this question. <laughs> What's your crouching tiger hidden dragon technique? Like, what is your one technique that you do when you go, yeah. That's me? That's me. That's my signature? Yeah. And, like, it just, like, makes makes your model pop, makes it better than anything else. Kind of. Um, uh, it, it's got to be chipping. Yeah. That that's my thing. That's your thing. That's that's my crouching tiger hidden dragon technique. That makes sense. Uh it's just because you get you put it in the right places, you can it's the same process, you can do it in so many different places yeah. and so many different just tw- tweaking the process ever so slightly mm. and you get so much storytelling. Yeah. Like fenders being torn completely off. Yeah. Like bullet holes, like bullet ricochets. All of that is the same technique. Like scraping the armor on something. Um, catching a tank round, mm. all of that is the same. Um, it's just a little bit of chipping, yeah. and it goes all the way. And my process is, uh, if we're going to talk, sorry, just a quick li- value contrast is why the GW formula works so well. Right. Base, wash, yep. layer, edge, highlight. Yeah, That's why it looks so good and it works so well. You've got four levels of contrast, yep. essentially. At least, yeah, value contrast. Yep. Yep. Um, so the, yeah. So the thing, the way that I do my chipping is... Take whatever your base color is, go two shades up, mm-hmm. put that on a sponge, get rid of most of it, sponge it on. Any of the big blotches, fill it in with your steel color. Mm. That's it. Well, so what? So, sorry, uh, <laughs> I think I blanked out for a second. Base. What color do you put on the sponge? Uh, edge highlight. So edge two highlight. shades brighter. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my um, for US olive drab because there's no blue in it. It's a yellow and black mixture. Mm. I use. Uh, Somewhere between a cream and a yellow, like right. almost a, a yellow flush color. Yeah, right. Iraqi sand, best color that a- <laughs> anybody has ever made. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is is incredible. I use a, uh, Iraqi sand, Sorry. for example. Yeah. Um, that was actually the same color I used on uh, Panzer Yellow, which was my Panther. Mm. Same thing again. Iraqi sand, sponged on, fill it in. Uh, I actually think I used Eschen gray, but any dark gray steel right. color will do. So I think not I can, metallic. I can feel the wrinkle growing on my brain, <laughs> but it, it needs a little bit of help. Of help. You're saying you put uh, uh, two times the color yep. on the sponge. Is that two above ten? If we're going the negative negative ten to ten uh, ratio, or n- no? In that case, it's almost my ten. It'll be an eight or a nine. Okay. Because because if you if you scratch something, yep. you create an edge. Yeah. And you edge highlight with your brightest color. Uh, okay. <laughs> but the thing is, because you have no three dimensions to it, yep. you have to trick it. Yeah. And so you trick it by giving it that really bright color mm. and the really dark color underneath. Now, th- this isn't, uh, I will preface this, this is not my technique. No. It's just the one that I like using. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the sponge variation is from Night Shift. Yeah, the color rules, or the brightness rules, is mm. from uh, Fenrir Miniatures. Oh, nice. Aiden. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he does a really cool video about how to paint Space Wolf armor. Okay, fantastic forty-minute video. Yeah, really detailed. Tells mm-hmm. you all the stuff, and you can see his process as well. Yeah, and he's also really well explained it. Same thing. Um, get your base color, get your edge highlight, chip it, and then fill in the fill it in with yeah, your nice. dark okay. gray or your, your your off steel. Don't use a metallic. Mm. My biggest thing is do not use a metallic free steel when yeah. you're doing the chipping. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, because it, it will absolutely kill the illusion. Okay. Absolutely kills it. Yeah, you'll be able to see the edges. But that, and that makes sense. And they'll be brighter. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, coming on and having a chat, having a yarn. Thanks for having me on your show, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. This like It's so funny looking at this. Like It was just an idea to put out this video, and then it was like, Hey, I'm going from one video a week, uh, one video a month sometimes, yep. maybe, trying <laughs> our best, to one video a week to, uh, this will probably, I'm trying to do two videos a week at the moment. I'm here for it. Yeah. I think hopefully our audiences as well. I hope so. Um, yeah, but, so thank you very much for coming on, everyone. Thanks for having me, Tom. Yeah. Hope you got something out of it. I got so much. My <laughs> mind is blowing. And I actually have here, for those of you playing along at home um, who kind of faded in and out. <laughs> Um, like I do when I'm listening to podcasts or, you know, you get to the end and you're like, Jesus Christ, that's been like an hour. How am I supposed to remember it all? These are the things that I'm picking up for us beginners, right? He took notes. I took notes. One, map it all out. If you're going into a painting competition, you want to start from the beginning. Or any project. Or any, any project. project. Any project. Doesn't um, matter if you're competing or not. Yeah. 
any project, map it out, know what you want the end result to look like and reverse engineer it is what I understand. I'm very glad you picked that up. Start at the end, work backwards. Because mm. if any project is like a tree, if you start at the trunk, you can find a thousand ways to get to a leaf. Yep. If you start at the leaf you want, there's only one way to the trunk. Nice. Yeah. So start with the end in mind. Um, map it all out. Start with the end in mind. Tr leaf to trunk. Um, second, mechanical skills are art demystified. So you know that you can learn how to do a skill. It takes practice. I'm not going to deny that. And I know I'm going to sit down with my Intentional cultist. Intentional practice. Intentional practice. Thank you. I know I'm going to sit down with my cultist now and also my worries of chaos and just practice weathering, uh, like uh, recess washes, uh, sorry, pin, pin. washes, uh, all of that, um, and just practice it. Because I know I, if I can get those skills, suddenly my model will look good and people will go, wow, that looks amazing. I'm like, I didn't put any quote unquote creativity in this. I just followed the steps. Thirdly, layers, 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 and paint in order. Start from the bottom. Deepest now layer. Now we're here. Yeah, deepest layer. Started yep. from the bottom. Now. Anyway, <coughs> so, and finally, and this one is the one that blew my mind, negative 10 to 10 contrast, black to white. That is how you should always, and it kind of fits in with the layers, layers, layers Correct. step. But yep. just the idea of that, like, start here and finish there and it makes sense when you think about it in a games workshop standard which i'm sure a lot of our viewers do like they yeah, probably yeah, yeah. paint games workshop sure and you're told you know base wash wash layer, highlight edge yeah yep. all that jazz so yeah definitely that's what i picked up and then the crouching tiger technique if if you're going for that um you're above my pay grade so <laughs> <laughs> chipping's uh, easy yeah easy no from what I understand, it's a sponge and some colouring. Literally all that it is. hundred <laughs> percent. And I'm not being facetious. No. All that it is. Yeah. So um, I hope that this has demystified it for you. Um, and I hope... I, in fact, you know what I'll try and do? I'll try and put in the show notes where those are. So... Sure, yeah. Like I put um, time codes for map it all out, mechanical skills, layers, 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 and negative 10 to 10 contrast. Um, How's that for value add? Oh, mate. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for uh, coming, Gorch, and thank you very much for listening or watching. Um, leave a uh, like or a follow, uh, subscribe to us, give us that five star, the thumbs up, whatever the rating system is. Don't forget to hit the bell. Don't forget to hit that bell. Um, we really, really do appreciate every single person who watches these videos. Um, it gives us a great boost in confidence because um, I'm currently in that stage with these kind of videos of like, I don't know if this will work. Is this a good idea? And I'm literally treating it as a, as a learning process, which is amazing because in case you haven't been able to tell, I am a film student. <laughs> so, <laughs> horror. so this for me is like with the editing with the lighting with even this setup learning it all is is a learning process for me yeah so i'm i'm getting a two for one uh for this but for you it. know it's always nice to have people say hey man that was a cool video uh so leave a comment um say hey man that was a cool video and if you have any questions you want to ask an expert uh <laughs> Put it down in the comments, or um, and an expert me. will answer. It won't be me. No, no. <laughs> we have uh, we have a whole bevy of. Um, oh, I won't call them experts. I think we settled on the term advisors. Um, Subject matter experts. Yeah. Well, Subject matter. No, they didn't like experts. Um, yeah. Advisors was what we settled sure. on. So we're going SMAs. with that. Yeah. Subject matter advisors. There you go. SMAs. Um, so if you have any questions, we will have some amazing painters on. Um, but until next time, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll. See you later. See you all next time. Bye.